Okay, hi, so welcome to this video. This is going to be a new type of video. Now I'm aware that you guys are gonna have mocks coming up and eventually you're gonna have your real exams. And at the moment I'm busy releasing uh, new content for the new specification. However, what I've decided to do is make shorter videos in which I answer exam style questions on certain topics, right? I may even release exam style questions on topics I haven't released the full video for yet. This will help you guys prepare for your exams and your exam practice. And so that is why I'm making these. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to be covering one exam style question where we're gonna be looking at cells. So let's get started. If I scroll down, here we go. Now there we go, that fits. Now, below we have a very badly drawn, because I drew it, diagram of an animal cell, right? Now you have different parts of your cell labeled here. Let me just highlight those. You've got A, which is pointing here to this blob in the middle. You've got B, which is pointing to this dot here, which is the same as all of these other dots, which are just throughout the cytoplasm. Right, I just gave it away another answer. C here is pointing to uh, another, this red part. E here is pointing to the outside of the cell, this line here, and D is pointing to what is in the middle. Spoiler alert. Now, moving down, here we have part A of our question. It says that one of the labeled subcellular structures is responsible for regulating the movement of substances into and out of the cell. Name this structure. Notice it doesn't say write the letter for this structure, it says name it. So even though we could find it on here, right, what we actually want to do is name it. So basically you should know this already. If you don't, then please have a look at the videos where I do cover um, the structure of different cells. This one's an animal cell, but this particular component is present in all cells, right? This particular component is called the cell membrane now i hope you guys can see this okay i might actually zoom in a little bit let's here we go okay so the cell membrane would be our answer all right there we go now the cell membrane on this diagram is e okay so e here that is our cell membrane now the cell membrane is basically a filter or it's like it's almost like the bag which is holding everything inside the cell together more importantly though what it does is it regulates what moves in and out the cell by that we mean it filters things so some things are allowed in for example water is allowed in and out to move by osmosis right other things just glucose they can diffuse into and out of the cell oxygen can diffuse into and out of the cell other things though, like large proteins, are too big, right? They can't fit through the cell membrane. It's basically a filter which is stopping them. And so that basically filters out certain things which aren't allowed in and certain things which are. And so that is the job of the cell membrane. So moving on, we have part B. It says, name the structure labeled A and describe its function. So if we go up here, you can see that the structure A is this blob in the middle. Right, and in a eukaryotic cell, which an animal cell is, they have they all have this blob, right? Well, with a few exceptions of specialized cells, but in general they have this, and it's called the nucleus, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is come down here and write the nucleus. All right, let's move that down actually, like so. That is the nucleus, right? It also says describe its function. Now, the nucleus of any cell is where the DNA of that cell is stored, okay? So, the nucleus stores the DNA slash chromosomes uh, of the cell, right? Because your DNA basically exists as chromosomes. Those are all found in the nucleus. Now, if you wanted to go a little bit further, you can also say that these regulate, or this, sorry, this regulates the chemical processes which the cell carries out. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, your DNA basically is the code which makes you up, right? Now, the DNA pretty much dictates what the cell is going to be doing, okay? Not going into too much detail, but certain parts of your DNA may code for a specific enzyme, Right, that enzyme may then catalyze a certain reaction. It allows a reaction to happen in the cell. But that all stems from the DNA, 
right? Now, if the DNA is coding for that enzyme and that enzyme therefore is doing something in the cell, the DNA has therefore regulated that process, okay? And that's why we say that it can regulate chemical processes which the cell carries out, okay? All right, moving on. Part C says that human muscle cells contain a high quantity of subcellular structure, C. Suggest an explanation for this. And so let's go back up and have a look. C is this red thing here, right? That red thing is actually the mitochondria. Okay, mitochondria, if you wanted to talk about one of them, singular is mitochondrion, or plural is mitochondria. And now you should know that the role of the mitochondria is that is where aerobic respiration happens, right? So aerobic respiration happens in the mitochondria. And now if we're to think human muscle cells, all right, let's actually uh, make some room. Like so. All right. Now it says human muscle cells contain a high quantity of that structure, right? Suggest an explanation. Now, if these cells contain a high quantity of mitochondria, that means that they're going to be doing a lot of respiration. Does that make sense for muscle cells? Absolutely, yes, it does, right? Because muscle cells are involved with movement, okay? Or your muscle fibers, muscle cells, are involved with movement. Movement requires energy. And aerobic respiration, the role of that is to provide energy, right? It's basically to obtain the energy from glucose. And so if you have loads of mitochondria, it means that you're going to be providing loads of energy to the cell. And in this case, it's so that it can move. So the explanation would be the high number, number, number of mitochondria inside the muscle cells is a result of the high amount of energy needed by not boo, by the muscles. Okay. Aerobic respiration occurs within the mitochondria. Yep. And a high quantity of mitochondria allows the muscles to produce a large amount of energy required for movement. Okay, so that's part C done. Let's have a look lastly at section D. It says subcellular structure B is where proteins are made. Okay, it says name this structure and comment on whether this structure can be found in plant cells and in bacterial cells, right? So this last part is kind of a crossover between the different parts of cells. Now it says structure B, which are these dots, okay? It says that's where proteins are made. And you should know that where proteins are made are the ribosomes. Okay, extremely important. They are the ribosomes. Now, what we need to do is comments on whether they can be found in plant cells and in bacterial cells, right? Now, common mistake here is to think that ribosomes do not exist in bacteria. In plant cells, very similar to animal cells, plant cells normally have the same components as animal cells plus a few extra, right? And you probably know what they are. Bacterial cells, though, are missing certain components. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're missing certain components. For example, a nucleus. They don't have a nucleus. They also don't have mitochondria. However, all living things need proteins, right? Proteins are extremely important. And bacteria are no different. Bacteria need proteins. They also contain ribosomes. Okay, so structure, structure B is the ribosome. Yep. Now, both plant cells and bacterial cells contain ribosomes in order to produce proteins okay and that's all we need to say for that it doesn't say go and explain it it doesn't say go and uh, talk about uh, the role of proteins and why we need proteins that is sufficient for this question okay and that about does it so that was just a short video that was a um, exam style question in different sections uh, answered how it should be answered 
Okay, so I'm going to stop there. If you do have any questions relating to this, please feel free to pop them in the comment box below or send me a direct email using the link. But also, if you do have a topic that you really want me to cover, uh, then do post that in the comment box as well, okay? Because I am going to be making these not in the order uh, that I'm making the video. Uh, the main content videos. So I might do some chemistry exam style questions, might do some physics exam style questions, just so that we've covered all bases. But let me know which ones you want to see, and I'll crack on and try and make those. But I hope you enjoyed. As usual, please like and subscribe because it really does help me out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.